Hello and welcome to CIA. My name is Mayank and in this video I will show you how we can install Natan in four different ways. These ways include Docker and no Docker. So the four ways that I am going to show you today are install Natan directly as a node package. For this you need to of course install the node.js. Installation of the node.js is quite easy and you just need to go to node.js.org. Here you can select the version of the node. I recommend that you use LTS version. Then you can choose which system you are using. So I'm using Ubuntu, so I will go for Linux. And then I will leave these uh, settings as it is. And then copy this command to clipboard and paste it on the terminal. And uh, that will install the Node.js for you. If you don't want to use Node.js, you may use uh, another alternative, which is the second way. You can run Natan directly with uh, the Docker. For this, of course, you need to have Docker installed. Okay, so third way uh, is to install Natan with Docker and Postgres. Uh, basically, SQLite is good if you are testing it out and you have to run just very simple workflows. But if you are thinking about scaling or if you are thinking about uh, creating complex workflows and uh, you want to keep a lot of workflow history intact, you will need something like Postgres. So this is uh, the third way and the final way will be to install and run Natan with Postgres but without Docker. So for this we will install the Postgres on uh, the host itself and then we will configure the database and then we will configure Natan to use that Postgres. So this is basically our tech stack that we are going to use. I am using Amazon Lightsail but you can use DigitalOcean or any other server platform that you want. Even you can install Natan on your local host as well and uh, I'm using Nginx for reverse proxy because I'm running this on server. Then uh, of course uh, for Docker, Dockerized version you will need Docker. If you're not uh, do Dockerizing Natan you can directly use it as well. And uh, with reverse proxy of Nginx I'm using CertBot to obtain Let's, Let's Encrypt certificate for uh, my domain. Uh, I have already created a video for this. Uh, I will link it in the description and the card button. Uh, so you can go there and uh, just understand how this is working. Because in this video, I will not discuss about the platform. I will just jump directly on the tutorial. So like I said, the first method we have is to install Natan as the package directly. For this, uh, you just need to uh, make sure that you have node and you have npm. So if both of these are available with you, all you need to do is install Natan uh, and I will just install it globally. So for that, you need to run npm install g for global and then Natan. This will take some time and install the Natan globally and uh, then there is really nothing else here to do and you can just run Natan directly from here. Okay, so now the installation is complete. Let's just run the Natan. To run the Natan, you just have to run Natan. That's it. It's as simple as that. And uh, it will take some time. It is just doing some migrations. Uh, and now, as you can see, the prompt so uh, command shows that you have uh, Natan running on this port. I have uh, already mapped reverse proxy on my domain demo dev dot app. So I'm just going to use uh, demo dev dot app, and uh, it should work out of the box. As you can see, this is the first sign that your Natan is working uh, you just need to fill in your details and uh, go on it is asking you about few things you want if you want you can uh, enter these details otherwise you can just click on get started and if you wish to have a license key by the way it is free you can uh, skip it as well as you as you can see that there is a skip option but uh, if you wish to have a license key and register it with the Natan, uh, you can go on and uh, click on this button. They will send you the license key. For this demonstration, I will skip this process. And uh, this is the default layout for the Natan. And uh, there is one more thing I always like to check be before I could actually, you know, proceed with the testing. Go to the webhook node and check for this uh, instead of the domain if it is showing that uh, you have the localhost domain here. By the way, if I just go to let's say if I copy this node and listen for test event and go here and instead of this localhost, if I type the actual domain, it should work. 
So as you can see, the workflow was started and we can see the details here as well. However, the better way is to make sure that we are, uh, that the actual domain is displayed here. So you don't have any problem when you are configuring the webhook somewhere and you want to copy the webhook. So it's better to configure this uh, in, in the env file. So the process would be quite simple. I will go back and uh, close this Nathan. Okay, and now um, what we need to do is we need to create a file in .naten and uh, let's call it .env and we are going to pass the environment variable. Sorry, uh, I need to use nano. And here I need to paste in some parameters. And by the way, all this information that I'm just copy pasting, this is already available on the blog and the link to the blog, I will put it in the description. So you can easily and comfortably read the text and uh, copy the commands and uh, copy the configurations as per your requirement. So well, what we have done here is we have told that the Natan is going to use protocol HTTPS. The host will be demo dev and the webhook URL should also be like this, the complete uh, protocol and host included. Let's just save it and then we are going to run Natan again. So let's just do it. Go back, refresh. Uh, let's go to the Natan uh, configuration directory and uh, here I'm going to run Natan again so, uh, because the env file is located in this directory I'm assuming that it will be able to load the env file so let's go back to the browser and test it one more time okay so as you can see now the Natan was able to load the env uh, file and its configuration so now we have the proper URL mentioned here um, the next step would be to test it with docker so let's go back to the console and uh, by the way there is one more problem we still have uh, we still have and that is uh, we don't want to keep Nathan always running like this so for that you can use PM2 uh, PM2 is like a, a manager for running Nathan processes so let's go ahead and install PM2 and let me show you how you can use PM2 first and then we can go back and uh, run Nathan in the docker. So let's install PM2 and PM install and I, again I will do it globally and uh, that's the command. So let's wait for PM2 to install and uh, okay so when uh, PM2 is done so now what I will do is I will just I'll run the command PM2 v it is just showing us the version and you want to see if the package is running you can do pm2 status right now as you can see there is no natron running so let's start it um the command would be pm2 start and i want to start natron and name it natron as you can see now it has started so we can check the status uh, by running pm2 status of natron as you can see this is running let's go back to our browser and see if it is still working fine so i will just refresh the page and there is no problem in the loading of the website so i know that it is still working fine with pm2 as well um, and the domain is also fine so that's one way now let's go to the second step and uh, i will just pm2 stop natan and pm2 delete natan first let's uh, create a directory so that we can manage our files uh, files in one place so i will make a directory uh, outside of this natan of course so uh, maybe just because i want to create in this directory only so let's call it natan docker i will cd into this directory and here we will create a env file and in the env file i will be just putting the same environment variables i'm saving it and now i will create a docker compose so let me just quickly paste the configuration uh, and then let me explore uh, tell you what it is doing so in here we are telling to uh, telling docker to run the services and the service that we are running is going to be natan uh, we have specified the name of the image of the Natan and the container name and we have specified that it is going to use for port 5678 and it will export it to host port 5678 because uh, from host port 
our nginx will be able to take it and uh, do the mapping of the incoming request to this particular port then we are telling it to use the env file uh, that we just created and finally we are telling it to use the volume uh, which is going to be located at this location so uh, this is the directory i just still need to create this data directory to make sure that everything is working so i will just save it exit and uh, let's create data directory if i do pwd you can uh, see that this is the directory that i specified in the docker compose so let's go back and just start it okay so as you can see the natan started and within the docker and because this was now inside the docker and docker does not had our previous configuration uh, of sqlite so or the data from sqlite so that's why it is asking me to sign up again so i will just do the sign up so i will just skip it skip it again create a workflow and i just want to see that uh, this webhook node is working properly and because we copied the env file in the docker as well so that's why it is already taking the proper url so now you see that this is working with the docker so let's go and uh, add one more step to the docker now what we will do we will add the postgres uh, to the docker so let's stop it okay so completely removed the container okay so now let's let's prepare the env file for the postgres as well so this will remain as it is uh, we don't have any issues with this now we just need to pass the information about the postgres so i will add this information here so what we are doing at the this section particularly db type from uh, to db postgres password uh, this part is for natan to utilize the postgres that we are creating and this part here is for postgres to create its uh, database and user and the password okay so i will save this env file uh, let's check yeah information is saved now let's edit the docker compose and in docker compose also we need to make some uh, changes we just need to basically add one more service in the services section I will add one more service which is going to be postgres so all the information is here and we are passing the environment variables as you can see which we created for postgres only so basically we are using the same path for both snaten and this um, in the volume we men just need to mention the postgres data volume and i think our configuration is complete and uh, let's save it close it let me just test it if everything is there yes everything is there so now just docker compose up and d again so now it has started two containers instead of one as you can see let's go back and uh, this time i think it will ask us again yeah so this is asking us again now because we are not using sqlite but instead we are using postgres for the configuration because the domain is already passed in the env so that should not be a problem with the webhook node as well just to be sure i will test it once okay so the domain is also working that works fine uh, okay so we have already seen three ways first we installed it directly then we went with docker and then we went with docker uh, dockerized natan with postgres and now we will just run it on the host so i will go back to the terminal and do docker compose down okay so it's removed we can check it with docker ps and docker ps iphone a as you can see it was not just stopped but removed as well uh, let me clear those uh, this and i will go to another directory now so that we can keep the configuration separate let's call it natan only because we are just running the natan let's enter the directory but before we do anything we need to make sure that the postgres is installed so what i will do is i will first in uh, install the postgres so for that sudo apt update 
Now let's install it. sudo apt install postgres and ql contrib Done. So let's enable this as well. Okay, so now let's create the database. You need to replace this part with your some uh, good, good and strong password. Um, next step is to create database. You can notice that this is almost exactly the same uh, configuration that we passed with the dockerized version of the Nathan, but uh, well, we need to create this as well. And we are uh, telling it to assign the owner as Nathan user to the new database that we are creating. Let's switch to the new database. I'm just assigning the user to everything basically. I'm going to run this as a PM2 service. So I am going to create the ecosystem file for PM2. So let's do it nano config.js. And here, as you can see that everything that we used to pass in the environment, we have passed in here directly. So that's why I did not create a separate uh, .env file. And uh, we are just telling it to run the uh, to run Nathan. Uh, and uh, everything else is just passed as environment variable. And because this is not a Docker service, so uh, and our Postgres and Nathan both are running on the host itself. So that's why we need we don't need to rely on anything extra at all. And this is really easy process, uh, save and close. Uh, once that's done, what we will do is we will just start PM2 start ecosystem config. So it says that it has started. So let's check PM2 logs Nathan. Okay, so uh, as we can see from the logs that uh, the Nathan is now working. Uh, let's go back to this and try it again and again we are back to start because this time we are not using the dockerized version of postgres but the host version of postgres so that's why it is asking us for signing up again so i'm basically using the same configuration or same information to get started skip and i will just test the same thing that i always test and as you can see, the URL is also available here. So everything works perfectly. Okay, so that's it about this video. And I promise you in the start that there will be four ways you can use Nathan. And uh, I've already shown you all the four ways. If you still have any doubts, you can put them in the comments. And uh, in the upcoming video, I will show you how to use Nathan. What are the important notes, how it works. And uh, basically, it will be like a, a, like introduction to Nathan. Once you are familiar with the Nathan, I will show you some example workflows that we can create. And uh, there is a lot more coming. So please don't forget to subscribe the channel. If you find this video helpful, please click on that like button as well. Thank you so much.